CPUs are one hell of a complex beast. It helps to know how CPUs work so that you can understand this, but hopefully I'll make it simple enough that you can come away from this video a little bit smarter. This is going to be pretty simplified to help it be more accessible, but if you want to know any more information, I've left links to all of my sources in the links down below, so feel free to take a look at those. And of course, if I get anything wrong, please do let me know in the comments down below. This is a kind of a learning experience for both of us, uh, so hopefully, uh, especially if you have any more information just surrounding this topic, then please do leave that in the comments down below too. GPUs are mostly manufactured by two big companies, AMD and Nvidia. There are plenty of other GPU manufacturers and designers, including Intel, who now include GPU segments inside their CPU chips and have been doing it for a fair while now. But since AMD and Nvidia are the two big discrete card manufacturers, these are the ones that I'm going to focus on. GPUs first came about in the 1970s to help accelerate 2D graphics in games like Space Invaders. Yup, gaming has been pushing technology since at least the 1970s. Pretty awesome. The 1990s is when they really kicked off, especially with companies like ATI, NVIDIA, and Imagine Technologies Power VR coming to the sort of forefront of actually add-in cards that you can buy and use for your home computers, as well as obviously stuff like the uh, NES and SNES and all those sort of consoles. These cards mostly run with what are called fixed function units, which are basically pieces of hardware designed to do in one specific task and nothing else. These days GPUs use what are called programmable shaders, bits of hardware that can do multiple functions, but they're still pretty special. Specialized. GPUs process data in parallel, which means lots and lots of computations going on all at the same time. On the other hand, CPUs work sort of counter to that, and they work serially, so one thing at a time. Serial computation makes sense for most stuff. I mean, if you're doing a sum, for example, let's say 2 times 3 minus 5, you can't do the minus 5 until you've done the 2 times 3, so a serial workflow makes sense for that. Parallelization is great for graphics, though. The game through a library like the OpenGL, DirectX, or Vulkan passes what are called vertices to the GPU to process. Vertices are points in 3D space. They can be shown as a table of X, Y, and Z coordinates, and when you have three vertices you get a triangle, also known as a polygon or a primitive. The GPU performs any transformations needed, such as moving, rotating, or removing to the vertices, and then begins the rasterization stage. The reason why parallelization is great is that for every single frame you have millions if not billions of vertices to process, and a large number of them need transforming per frame. So to be able to calculate a whole load of of vertices all at the same time makes things a lot faster and a lot more efficient. To give you an idea, the Titan XP has 3584 CUDA cores, which are sort of small cores inside what is a sort of bigger computation unit. The Titan XP has 28 sort of computation units, which means 128 CUDA cores per computation unit or per core. An RX 480 has 2,304 stream processors, which are something slightly different, but they manifest in the same way. There's 64 cores per compute unit because they has 36 compute units, uh, which is actually pretty amazing. Back to the stages. Rasterization, as I mentioned earlier, is the process of turning those vector graphics, if you've ever worked with Adobe Illustrator, you know what I'm talking about here, into uh, pixels that you can actually display on the screen. They're actually converted into what are called pixel fragments and they need further processing before we can actually compile them together. Color is added when the GPU processes the lighting in the scene. Some game engines make the GPU do this all on the fly but for the majority as far as I'm aware they have pre-compiled lighting data so that it's a lot quicker and more efficient for the GPU to process so that the game runs a bit faster. You also have to go through the texture stage. This is where you apply a texture map so basically an image or a color over the shape that you're processing to be able to give it your final color. And of course each pixel fragment is processed separately but in parallel. These fragments are then compiled together and using the z-axis data the GPU can tell what's meant to be in front or behind and then computes accordingly. It's then finalized into a frame and sent out to the display through the graphics cards uh, display hardware and this could involve on-the-fly compression or it could involve especially if you're using VGA a digital to analog conversion into voltages before then being sent to the monitor. So that was a rather simplified look at what's called the graphics pipeline or basically the stages that the GPU has to go through to draw each frame. Here's a look at the current DirectX 11 and 12 graphics pipeline stages. As you can see, we have the input assembler which gets all the vertex data needed. We then go through the vertex shader, doing all of the transformation, skinning and lighting to the vertices that's needed. In DirectX 11 and 12, we also have the hull shader, tessellation stage, and the domain stage, which aid in tessellation and ordering of the geometry. Speaking of geometry, that's just the name for the collection of primitives, or basically the collection of triangles that are going to be used in the scene. The geometry shader processes full primitives, including removing them entirely if they fall off the screen. The stream output stage is next, and is where the data can be intercepted to either copy 
copy to memory and be used again later or passed back to the CPU for further processing. The data then goes to the rasterizer stage which is known as a fixed function so there's a specific bit of the chip on the GPU designed to do this thing and nothing else. As mentioned earlier this is where the vectors are converted to pixel fragments or in this case pixel shaders. The pixel shader stage gives each fragment color and depth values then it's onto the output merger stage where the GPU combines all the fragments into a single image then is saved to the image buffer ready to be displayed on screen. So that is how a GPU works. Congrats if you got this far. To make it clear this is a skimming overview on how GPUs work and next to AMD's Vega that's likely going to change a little bit as well because the, the way that they use high bandwidth memory or HBM2 uh, is just a very interesting way. They use it as a sort of high speed cache as opposed to how we normally use uh, GDDR5 VRAM uh, so that'll be a very interesting thing to see when it is available. If you enjoyed the video and felt you learned something new please consider subscribing and of course sharing the video either on Reddit or tech forums or just with someone you know. If you want to help me out even more when buying from Overclockers UK or Amazon if you use the affiliate links in the description down below it helps me out it supports the channel and keeps me making these sorts of videos. Otherwise leave a comment below from what you learned from the video and of course if you have any more information or I messed up anything here please let me know in the comments down below as I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on Friday for the Z270 build guide video which is going to be a very interesting one and of course next Wednesday as well for my video on the current state of the GPU market. See you then.